we have such a wonderful community, and <clears throat> such a wonderful volunteer culture, in which this is perhaps the latest product. And now a brief uh, interruption for a commercial announcement. If any of you would like to purchase a copy of the book from which Bill just read, they are available at the Village Hall and at the Unique Book Boutique for $9, and it's a great bargain. And now I should dispel any illusions. I, I'm not dressed like this for your benefit. I just came from a funeral in Rochester, and I'm going to George Mann's calling hours afterwards, so that's why I'm dressed like this. But that's not why I have all these pens, however. Well, yes, <clears throat> Margie asked me to speak for a moment, so I've spoken. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Herbie. Uh, our purpose this afternoon is, uh, with the dedication of this mural, is to celebrate the centennial of the reconstruction of New York's canal system. A uh, hundred years ago today, men like this were at work. Uh, uh, creating this canal uh, through the village of Rockford. The, uh, for instance, the Main Street Bridge is uh, dated from 1915. So it, from 1912 to 1916, they were building the canal in Brockport. That system, just to put this a, a bit in historic perspective, uh, <clears throat> that canal system has passed through four stages, of which the New York State Barge Canal was the third. The first was Clinton's Ditch, which was built from 1817 to 1825. Eight years, in eight years they, they built it at a cost of $9 million. And it made a, a huge profit. It was uh, financially enormously successful. It even paid all of the debts of New York State so there wasn't any taxation during those years. Then the second phase was the enlarged canal, which began nine years after the completion of the Clinton's Ditch and extended really throughout the rest of the 19th century. The main phase was from 1834 to 1862. And during that period of time, they spent $40.5 million and they increased the capacity for boats from 30 tons to 240 tons, which was a big increase, but it lost money. It, it, uh, it was a money loser. And in, in 1852, passenger traffic stopped on the canal because of the competition of the railroads. 1880 was the peak traffic year. 1882, they abolished the tolls. And after that, traffic continued to decline until by the end of the century, it became necessary to make a decision about the future of the canal. There were three options. One, leave it the way it was and let it slowly decline. Two, uh, abandon it, which was a good possibility, or three, modernize it and rebuild it. So the, with Theodore Roosevelt was governor at that time and the decision was made to modernize it. And it was transformed from being uh, animal powered to uh, mechanical power, diesels and, and steam engines. And because they no longer needed to have a towpath, they could go up the Mohawk River, across Lake Oneida, down the Seneca River, the Tonawanda Creek, and the only uh, extensive length of, of Doug Canal that remained was from Palmyra to Lockport, in, in which Brockport is about at the, at the midpoint. That cost $155 million. Prices are going way up. And it, it took 13 years instead of the eight years that the original canal uh, took. So after that, the, the traffic on the canal fluctuated from year to year. But basically, it was in the na nature of t 2 million tons to 5 million tons. And the, the golden age of the New York State Barge Canal was the period after World War II, when there was usually between 4 million and 5 million tons of traffic. The peak was in 1951, and that c continued more or less at that level until about 1980, and I'm sure many of you remember that. And then the construction of the St. Lawrence Seaway, the, the uh, New York State Thruway, and finally the 
the oil pipeline that came through here drained away the traffic, the freight traffic from the canal, so that it was went into a rapid decline after 1980 until by 1995, instead of three, four, five million tons, it was like 21, 22,000 tons. So once again, a decision had to be made about the future of the canal. What was to happen to it? One was it could be abandoned. Two, it could uh, be left the way it was. And three, it could be transformed. And so the decision was made about 1991 to transform it into a tourism and recreation facility, which was done at the cost of hundreds of millions of dollars since that time. So what we were, what, but what we're really celebrating here th this afternoon is the survival of the canal as a result of the decisions that were made in 1900 uh, so that we still have today a canal that is an important economic asset to New York State and to the village of Brockport. And in particular, that's uh, we have, uh, I, I like to call attention to the, the steam shovel there. You see on the side it says Cleveland and Son. Well, Cleveland and Son was a construction company that was based in Brockport. Uh, Merritt Cleveland lived in the, he built the house that's behind the Catholic chapel on uh, Kenyon Street. And his son Milo built the house that's across the street, that big white student housing. And they did, they, bu they d uh, built canals in Canada, railroads in Ohio and Pennsylvania and New York. And they were responsible for the seven mile stretch of, ca of canal in the town of Sweden. So we celebrate not only the survival of the canal as a result of the construction of the New York State Barge Canal, but also the role that Brockport people played in that uh, achievement. So we have ample reason to celebrate this afternoon beyond celebrating the beauty of this lovely mural. Isn't it wonderful? Thank you. Was that a moment or wasn't it?